Season 1 Sponsored by Oxus Project Hello, Namaste and a very warm welcome to another episode of DD Startup Junction Season 1. Well, entrepreneurs walk a long way. There are so many entrepreneurs, so many sectors, and this is a platform where entrepreneurs meet the venture capitalists and a lot of business happens here. I'm sure you're all excited to see the ideas, the startups, the presenters who are gonna come today. Before we begin the show, a very warm welcome to our jury members. We have Mr. Gururaj from Oxus Project, Dr. Shrikanth Partsarthi, Group CFO at Chakra Venture Partners, Dr. Shiv Ramakrishna, co-chair, Medicaid Ethos Private Limited, and Professor S.V. Subramanya, former vice president and research fellow at Infosys. Fantastic. It is such a pleasure to have you all amongst us. I'm sure our audience are ready, our participants are ready. Without further ado, I would like to call upon our first startup presenting their idea, Widcare. Let me welcome the person from Whitcare. Hello and welcome. How's the day been for you? Thank you. All Wonderful. the best. Thank Present your idea. Go for it. My name is Rohan Agarwal, founder of Whitcare Innovations, a point of care diagnostic startup trying to improve access to diagnostics in resource limited settings. When we talk about hypothyroidism, there is no case more critical than that of pregnancy. An untreated case of pregnancy can lead to severe maternal, fetal and neonatal complications such as miscarriage, premature births, poor mental and physical development of baby and so on. While there has been a push to, mandatory, to do mandatory testing of all pregnant women, it has rarely been realized due to no access available at the local level in remote areas. Currently, anyone who wants to get tested has to visit district level facilities which are often located at long distances. It has been seen that maximum care happens at the local level, but none of the current solutions can be deployed at these locations because they are either ex very expensive or require trained manpower, leading to a low benefit to cost ratio. To overcome these challenges, we have designed an easy to use blood test for testing of hypothyroidism in pregnant women such that it can be used by anyone, anytime, anywhere. The device is a mobile phone enabled credit card size disposable test. It is one of a kind test that does not require any electronic instrumentation or power source and hence can be used and deployed anywhere. It can give you different levels at different stages of the disease, helping in assessment of risk and ap taking appropriate action. Further, it can give you immediate results using a single step process that does not require any training. All you need to do is add two drops of blood into the device, wait 20 minutes and read results as, similar, as simple as reading a thermometer value. We have filed an IP on this, which we have extended globally uh, over the last few months. The market that we are targeting is that of mass testing for prevention of maternal and neonatal complications. It is an extremely large market with 26 million pregnancies happening in India every year. 70% around 18 million of them coming from rural India. We assess the government uh, to be our primary customer for deployment at sub-center and primary health center level. The early adopters will be the small hospitals and private, private clinics which do not have their own Inf uh, diagnostic infrastructure in place. A bit about the team, I'm an alumni of IIT Roorkee, having done my bachelor's in biotechnology. My uh, research head is a PhD from Wengen University, Netherlands, 
Ha he has more than 10 years of experience in the domain of microfluidics, immunoassay, and biosensor development. Another promoter is a finance and legal expert. And we have another board member in form of our incubator venture center. In addition to this, we have a research partnership with Dr. Sain from IIT Madras towards development of a certain aspect of our product. Currently, we are raising around 1.2 crore rupees to help us achieve the next targets that we have towards refinement, uh, testing, and validation of our product, which is expected to be market ready by July 2021. The we have been fortunate enough to get cons uh, consistent support from BIRAC, DST, and Venture Center. We were amongst the winners of the India Innovation Growth Program 2.0 last year, which is organized by DST, Tata Trust, and Lockheed Martin. We were also recognized by Hello Tomorrow as being a deep tech pioneer for being one of the most promising deep tech projects globally. And lastly, we were also recently selected by Royal Academy of Engineering UK as a, as a leader in innovation fellow. Thank you. Congratulations. I mean, that is tremendous work that you've been doing, especially in India where healthcare is a sector that needs access, not just in the metro cities, but also tier two, tier three definitely needs access to healthcare. It's a really, you know, the potential I see is really high. Let's hear to our judges. Yes, let's let's listen to what our jury members have to say. Mr. Gururaj. Uh, I would, uh, in fact, recommend Mr. Dr. Shuram Krishnan on this. Being a healthcare and Shuram Krishnan is the apt person. Right. I look at it as a good business model, but from the medical aspects, I would expect him to put a more light onto this. Absolutely. So Dr. Shivram Krishnan. Any light on accreditation factors? Uh, so we have a little bit of development work left. So all the, uh, all the uh, multi-central trials will happen after we are ready with the product. Mm -hmm. So that's, that would be around next year, around mid of next year. Pricing factor? Uh, so we assess the manufacturing cost to be around 60 to 70 rupees. We have one major factor in the pricing, which is particular reagent, which cost about, which is costing around 50% of that. So we are trying to get that cost, uh, get that cost down to about 5% of the overall cost. So which will bring down the cost to somewhere around 30 to 40 rupees in manufacturing. Uh, and we expect to sell the product around 200 rupees, the 15 to 20% mar gross margin. Mm -hmm. No, no, it comes back to me the other question. What is the distribution model if you are looking to penetrate rural market? So, uh, uh, in the rural market, uh, the only option is to go through the National Health Mission, where some state governments are supposed to take, undertake these mm -hmm. initiatives. So, in 2014, in December, there were guidelines to make this mandatory for all pregnant women. D uh, recently, the government of Karnataka has actually taken, up, taken out a tender mm -hmm. uh, for this particular purpose. Uh, two years back, the government of Maharashtra also conducted a pilot for this. And I'm seeing there is, would be cons uh, other, uh, there will be interest by other state governments uh, following these governments. Yeah, please. Fantastic, Dr. Shrikant. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, you know, there is a self-testing kit, right? I test, I, I pinch my own. It's, it's similar to my type two diabetes, where I, uh, where I take my blood and put it in a strip and so on. So right now we are looking at uh, in the use by the auxiliary nurse, midwives and the ASHA workers in these re remote areas Correct. because the people are not really educated enough to self-test this. Also the self-testing market requires certain amount of customer education. That's why we are uh, staying away from the B2C market segment. Okay. So your tier two cities are you're going to be a primary targets. But the question is, um, they have their own methodologies of doing this. So are you going to, what, what, what are you going to replace? What exactly are you replacing in the diagnostic center right now, if I were to ask you? So if a, if a patient goes to a diagnostic center, he is, uh, sorry, if a patient goes to a doctor, he is referred to a diagnostic center, there's a 40 to 50% chance that the patient will actually no, never go to a diagnostic center for getting a test done. So once the patient is in the uh, doctor's office, for example, if the doctor says that you can get the test done right there and then, even if it's a screening test, there's a high percentage that the test is going to actually happen. Thank you, juries. I'm sure the inputs would give you something to take back and think and ponder upon to the team. Thank you so much for those inputs. Let's get to the scores. Thank you. Yes. Are you nervous to listen to the scores? Are you excited? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, let's, let's put an end to it. Let's see the scores. Mr. Gururaj. 7.5. Dr. Shrikan, 7, Dr. 8, and a 7.
fairly good. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of other components which add to the final results. All the best. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I would like to call upon SLNS Renewable Resources Technology onto the stage to present their idea. Like the name says, I think it's about renewable energy. Yes. All the best, go for the pitch. Thank you. Myself, I'm, uh, we are founders for SLNS Renewable Energy Technologies. India's uh, I mean, current demand, 75% of the energy is coming from uh, thermal power. And 25%, around 20% is coming from hydro power. And only 2 to 3% is coming from renewable energy like solar, wind energy, hydro power and some other things. We have a solution, uh, a renewable energy with the moving traffic, we can I mean, capture the energy if you implement our solution. So the solution is very simple, no high funders, no big mechanisms, simple mechanical, hydro mechanical principles we are using and basic uh, machines or else equipment we are using in order to generate the energy. The basic principle goes like this. So the heavily crowded uh, areas like uh, junctions, traffic signals and uh, uh, parking lots uh, like uh, majestic I mean, bus stations, railway stations, uh, toll plazas, we will be affixing these uh, hydro mechanical systems whenever the traffic goes over it, it uh, produces the energy. So because of it and uh, neither these uh, vehicles nor the machines get damaged it is absolutely available 24 by 7 365 days and uh, failure free technologies and if especially if you look further even the electric uh, mobility is the next generation of this um, uh, what is that term transportation so after capturing this energy, I mean, we can put some charging stations at the toll plazas or else near in the, in the car parking lots in airport stations, parking areas. So we can capture the energy. So we already have the model, animated model. So we will be showcasing that. And at the same time, we developed a scaled down model of 10 watts, which is producing nearly a 90% of efficiency. So this is our idea. And basically we are here uh, for the fund requirement to develop a full-scale model, a pilot-run model, uh, nearly costing about uh, 10, to 15 lakhs. 10 to 15 lakhs. Fantastic. I mean, that was... I, I couldn't imagine generating power from moving vehicles. Let's hear from the judges what they have to say. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. Gururaj. Again, I think, do you have any uh, PUCR model where you already implemented it? Yes, we have that video, scaled down uh, model of 10 watts, and we able to produce the electricity and we light up the, I mean, uh, bulb, I tested I mean, that LED model. strips and all. Okay. Uh, based on that one only, I am uh, saying that 90% of efficiency. Yes, we have. That video is also available. Ben. Why you maintain that this will be a, a repair slash maintenance free kind of operation, it would necessarily not be. Uh, the reason being, there will be reasonable wear and tear, A, and since you use pistons, pistons have historically have had mechanical issues in them, which is the reason why we are moving away from a piston system into an electric vehicle system, right, which is one of the reasons. Number two. Um, 
You have a scaled down model which has given you efficiency of 90%. Yes. What we need to see to actually validate this particular proposition is for you to implement this in a toll gate and see what the efficiency that you can bring in one day of operation and what is the level of uh, maintenance that is required. But uh, competitor that you will see is in the US where uh, uh, you know uh, people are generating electricity by just running on that particular stretch of road where the road has been laid primarily for this particular purpose. So you don't have any fittings like these hydraulic machines uh, which will feed in the electricity. The technology what you are talking about, the moment you talk it will produce us the energy. Even right now we have a children's, I mean shoes where if you step in it will be. It is called Peugeot electric sensors. The moment they use those kind of sensors, there's a, those are very costly, at the same time very sensitive and the voltage what you will be getting out of it is milli olds milli olds you not even charge your nokia double one double zero five olds battery and if you want to use those systems investment will be huge and you have to use a parallel systems requires a huge space and output will be very minimum go to our next charge dr shivram krishna competitor I mean, we didn't see any competitor, but only like uh, uh, PJO patches, using PJO patches and generating and implementing throughout the roads, throughout the length of the road. So that concept was ready in the abroad countries, but not at implement at. Okay. Professor S.V.S. Yeah, mm, uh, I mean, it's a good, uh, basically these people are looking into alternate energy models. Definitely we are most welcome because today's 3%, maybe tomorrow's 50%. Definitely it is required. But the question comes to is it, to what energy scale we can take this model. That's only big thing because it's, uh, what is required is hundreds of megawatts. Uh, could we generate that? No, I'm talking of a large scale. What can happen is that can it really bring down the cost of uh, energy per unit in the long run? Uh, because uh, the amount of energy required to produce to bring down the cost is also one other thing which we need to see. Yes. I'm also, it's a mechanical yeah. because mechanical. it's a mechanical. As he said, I'll come back. It's always there will be wear and tear and maintenance. Yes. That's always there. Yes. It's a part of nature. So that uh, needs a lot more maturity to become yes, uh, one level standard where may the losses are very minimum. Thank you, jury. Thank you so Thank much. You. That's definitely a nice idea. Let's let's see how much the jury would like to score. Mr. Guraj. Seven. <laughs> Dr. Shrika. Seven. Dr. Seven. And yes another seven. Thank you. Guru. Thank you so much. Wishing yeah. you all the best. Thank you. Nature has so much to offer, especially a coconut tree, which is called Kalpataru. Every part of it has something to offer to the humankind and the mankind. And that is why probably it's called Kalpataru. We have a startup, Blessing Palm, which addresses an issue or which probably gives solution, innovative solution for something that we have been struggling with plastic and paper. And you'll know what that is. Please put your hands together to welcome our next startup, team from Blessing Farm. बायोडिग्रेडेबल उत्पाद इन दिनों लोकप्रियता हासिल कर रहे हैं क्योंकि दुनिया भर में अधिकांश प्लास्टिक उत्पादों पर प्रतिबंध है भारतीय स्टार्टअप ब्लेसिंग पाम्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड द्वारा शुरू की गई प्लास्टिक स्ट्रॉ का एक विकल्प इस अवसर पर एक महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा रहा है कृषि अपशिष्ट को उपयोगी पर्यावरण अनुकूल उत्पादों में परिवर्तित करना उनका लक्ष्य था जिसके परिणाम स्वरूप नारियल के पत्तों ऐसी स्ट्रॉ का उत्पादन हुआ and we tried to find out whether we can convert them into useful eco-friendly products. So the first of it was uh, the straws we made from fallen coconut leaves. And uh, during one of my experiments two years back, uh, if you do a proper steaming process, its own wax comes on its surface and that makes it antifungal. So that gave me an idea that it can be converted into a straw. Hello Jury, uh, we are Blessing Palms. Uh, we are a company which focuses on agri waste and we convert them into uh, proprietary uh, eco-friendly products and we engage the uh, women from the rural communities to produce them and then we sell it globally. So we have already five products uh, on the line. Uh, 
but the first and the most exciting of it is uh, these uh, straws, biodegradable straws, uh, which we uh, make from fallen, naturally fallen uh, dried coconut leaves. And uh, this innovation happened around nine months back uh, when I was okay, I, I work in Christ University and uh, uh, this uh, uh, startup is also incubated uh, at the seed level at Christ University. So uh, it's made from the naturally fallen coconut leaves. It's an absolutely chemical free process and uh, it is uh, antifungal. And some of the features are that uh, it can uh, have a shelf life of almost a year and it stays steady in beverages uh, for more than six hours. And uh, uh, it has its own wax, so it's only simply a chemical free process. It's a steaming process, uh, only a 45 minutes, 45 seconds of steam pressure brings its own wax to the surface. And uh, we have made it uh, such, such that it will have the same antifungal layer both inside and outside. And uh, uh, the beauty of it is that from one coconut frond, from one leaf, we can make up to 200 straws. And the beauty of it is that we have developed around, it has a five stage process. So we have made all the uh, proprietary machines uh, in house without having to go anywhere. And uh, till the last three months, we were uh, doing in very uh, semi-manual methods. So the production was very low. Uh, but what it did was uh, we started sending the samples to different countries. In fact, we sent it to 11 countries. And uh, the response has been overwhelming uh, to the extent that uh, for the year 2020, uh, we have orders for 10 million straws uh, from across uh, US, uh, Canada, Germany, uh, Malaysia, Japan, uh, Sweden, and Belgium. And uh, uh, to talk about uh, the machines, uh, so this is the solution that we have, the biodegradable uh, drinking straws. So uh, the, the various stages is that uh, it, it, it has to have a width cutting machine and then we have to scrape it so that the underside is all gone and it has a very almost a plastic like feel. And uh, we did a chemical validation at uh, Kasar Code Coconut Research Center and uh, the, the paper is published uh, in Canada in a Scopus Index Journal where we found out that it is only antioxidant. So it is even there are the exudates are actually useful for the body, it's good for the muscles. and. Uh, now, uh, what we are actually trying to do is, uh, we have started uh, centers in uh, six places uh, at Madurai, Tutikorin, and Kasar Code, and we are doing it at three more places. So, around uh, uh, 18 women are already engaged and they are uh, producing these straws. And now, uh, through EDII, uh, they are routing the CSR funds for us to start it in uh, 22 places. So, we are hoping that uh, in the next three months, we'll be able to do around 30 lakh straws per month. And over the next, uh, this entire year, our plan over the next three years is to uh, reach around 70 lakh straws uh, per month because with the machines that we have, we are able to do 5,000 straws. If we engage eight women and we are doing the pilot in the workflow process, we found out that they can make 5,000 straws very easily. So we can actually reach the numbers. And uh, some of the milestones that we reached is that uh, last in 2018, I was uh, in Scotland. We won the Climate Launchpad Award in Scotland for this particular straw. And also I won the uh, Confederation of Indian Industries Startup uh, Startupreneur Award. Uh, for the top startup in manufacturing and uh, two months back uh, for this product product I was invited to be uh, part of president of India's uh, business delegation to Philippines and when I addressed there I found out that uh, the agriculture minister of uh, ministry of Philippines is interested in this uh, product because uh, around 25 percent of that agriculture is all uh, coconut farms and uh, so our ask is around 1.5 crores uh, so that uh, we can start at 50 centers and we can uh, engage around 450 women and we can have the target of 70 lakh straws in a month. Thank you very much. Wow, this is absolutely fantastic and phenomenal. I have no words to say. First Thank of all, much. congratulations on the grand success that you've already seen. Thank you very much. And without talking much, let me go to the jury and listen to what they have to say. Doctor? Fantastic. It's environmental friendly, yes. no chemicals, and you are giving a labor woman employment and fantastic thing, and it's also a material easily available. Only, only one concern. Yes, sir. This is a thing which can be replicated by anybody later stage. Uh, so, have you protected any? Yeah, is there any IP you can protect? This is one it? of the fastest patent got granted uh, last year oh. for this product. Okay. okay. And all That's the machines are also uh, all the all the machines are also in-house made so that they are both patentable and design protected. Have yes, a, Dr. Shrikant. Uh, what is a um, if I were to buy as a consumer, yeah. so what would be, do I buy it as a stack or do I buy it as an individual unit? Uh, we are selling it at 24 straw packets. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, we have priced it at 3 rupees now. In fact, I've been able to sell it right from 3 rupees up to 8 rupees. And in fact, the sample boxes now we have already this month, we have orders for 20,000 samples alone. So one, one data point that I want to add to you uh, over here, since it's so novel and so unique, 
uh, there may be a bit of a customization that he may want to do for the straw. Exactly. Which is, uh, you know, which is, which is probably drawing the face of uh, the child who is drinking that particular uh, straw. I or possibly writing a name of the person who's, exactly. uh, who's uh, you know, drinking from that particular we straw. We are trying, trying to do a lot, lot of laser labeling. But one more thing I forgot to mention was we, we are the only organic biodegradable straws which we can customize right from the stirrers. That is 2 mm up to the 13 mm straw which is used for bubble tea drinking. You know, mm. So Thailand uh, asked for those bubble tea straws. We made those 13 mm straws as well. And they were very pleased with the product. In fact, Malaysia, a delegation already came asking for... Uh, These uh, are collectible items. Actually, yeah. you know, uh, and we make uh, pouches also out of the leftover leaf strips. And we put it in a very exotic packaging and we can sell it at a premium price. Mr. Guriraj. Product lens you were saying, you said it is one of the product. Yes, yes. So one is the, the uh, dishwashing product? scrubbers. Uh, okay. There's a mesh of the coconut leaf. Mm. Every leaf uh, which comes out has a mesh, which is uh, which is naturally a, a mesh. So I converted them into uh, the you know a competition for the Scotch Bright sc uh, scrubbers, okay. and it has very high oil absorbing capacity. In fact, without Wim detergent, Wim also, mm. it takes up the entire oil, and when you put it under tap water, the oil drains off, so it's fresh again, and you can use it for a month. So we tested it, and it is fan working fantastic. So. I, I needless to ask, but definitely part of my job is to ask for this course, Professor SVS. 8.5, Doctor, that's a 9.5, Dr. Shrikant, a 9.5 again, Mr. Guraj, 9. Fantastic, Thank congratulations, you. Thank, you. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Grow to greater heights. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of today's episode and you've all seen startups pitching their ideas. We've heard the comments from jury. We've also seen the marks that they give, which makes only 40% of the total score. The rest 30% comes from the participants who will fill in Google Forms and also vote for their peers. They will score the peers according to what they felt. The other 30% to make it 100% comes from all of you audience sitting and watching from your homes. Do send us a WhatsApp message on 94494. 76539. That's the number. I'll repeat 94494 76539. Send us your messages on which startup you liked. What is the score? Please rate all the startups and taking all of this into consideration. At the end of five weeks, we will announce who the big winner is. Do vote for your favorite startup and send it to the below mentioned WhatsApp number in the prescript format shown on your screen. To vote for your favorite startup, Type first four letters of alphabets and send it to the below mentioned WhatsApp number that's 9449476539. To vote for Bambigo, type B A M B. To vote for Clean PO, type C L E A. To vote for Do Visual, type D O W H. To vote for Two Two Technologies, type T W O T. To vote for Busy Brains, type B U Z A. To vote for Karma Labs, type KARM. To vote for Stakathan Academy, type STOC. To vote for Vidcare Innovations, type VIDC. To vote for SLNC Renewable Energy, type SLNS. To vote for Blessing Palms, type BLES. And uh, with that, that comes to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode with more startups.